In 2012, it was reported that China had potentially enticed engineers from ASML, a leading semiconductor equipment manufacturer, to join a Chinese government-controlled U.S. company. This move allegedly involved the transfer of purportedly stolen ASML machine specifications. This is part of China's larger goal to reshape the global semiconductor industry, drawing it into conflict with the U.S. This isn't about market control or tariffs, but security. So what precisely led China and the U.S. into this fierce rivalry over computer chips? Let's find out. Now, it's becoming a major battleground for rival superpowers. The race is on to secure dominance of the world's supply of computer chips. But first, subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon for all the latest updates. The first semiconductor chip, a silicon piece with four transistors, was created by American engineers in the 1950s. As transistors increased, so did the chip's power. This rapid development has been consistent since the 1960s, as pointed out by Chris Miller in his book Chip War. Intel's founder, Gordon Moore, predicted in 1965 that a chip's computational ability would double annually, a trend largely observed till now. Initially, chip-making companies, primarily serving the U.S. government, utilized these chips in NASA's spacecraft and missile navigation systems. With chip companies annually improving their products, the U.S. government sought a close alliance to secure access to the most advanced chips. The U.S. has viewed computing as a critical factor in global power dynamics, considering its role in code-breaking during World War II or tracking Soviet submarines in the Cold War. Initially, these chip companies managed the complete supply chain within the U.S., from designing and producing the chips to packaging them for product integration. However, by the late 1960s, they discovered greater profitability in designing chips for commercial goods like business computers, provided they could mass-produce them at a lower cost. Numerous chip companies transferred their production and assembly to factories in Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, and Hong Kong, where labor costs were lower. The U.S. government supported this move as these countries were allies or partners, and this action boosted their economies while strengthening relationships. Simultaneously, the U.S. prohibited these companies from sharing technology with its competitors, specifically the Soviet Union and China. This strategy was designed to maintain a technological lead over these countries as chip technology progressed. As the U.S. chip companies transferred their manufacturing overseas, allied countries like Japan and South Korea began building their competitive chip industries during the 1970s and 80s with firms like Toshiba and Samsung. By the 1990s, Taiwan's TSMC became so proficient in chip manufacturing that it led many U.S. companies to stop doing it. This globalized the industry, making every nation increasingly dependent on others for resources and technology. Meanwhile, China lagged due to historical factors like the Cold War and internal policies. However, as the geopolitical climate changed and the U.S. became friendlier with China in the 1990s, many chip companies relocated their assembly operations there. By the 2000s, China dominated this aspect of the supply chain. But the increasing import of chips for assembly put China in a complex position. The Chinese government started investing heavily in its chip design and manufacturing manufacturing companies, hoping to establish a completely domestic chip supply chain by collaborating with international firms. Soon, China was able to design, produce, and assemble some earlier versions of chips, mostly independently. However, it was still not ready to produce the latest, most advanced chips. For instance, one such cutting-edge chip has around 114 billion transistors. Just for comparison, back in 1960, chips only had four transistors. The challenge lies in the fact that only a few global companies, none of which are in China, are involved in making these advanced chips. Initially, three American firms produced the necessary software for designing such chips. These designs need a machine produced by a single company, ASML, to convert them into real chips. However, this machine relies on equipment manufactured exclusively in the U.S. Finally, only Taiwanese and South Korean companies can assemble and manufacture the most advanced processor chips. These companies represent bottlenecks in the supply chain, leaving China entirely dependent on them for advanced chips. In 2019, when U.S. police went to arrest Zhongchang Yu, he was nowhere to be found. 
he later surfaced in China as the CEO of a flourishing company that developed software akin to ASML, backed by the Chinese government. His story is among several instances of intellectual property theft in the chip industry. China's strategy to reduce dependence on foreign supply chains involved identifying critical points like ASML and replicating them. However, this approach didn't work out as expected and instead greatly upset the U.S. government and other countries. They started viewing China's subsidies as a security matter rather than an economic issue. This situation unfolded when the U.S.-China relationship became less friendly and more competitive. In 2018, the Trump administration prohibited U.S. companies from selling components to ZTE, a Chinese tech firm. In 2019, it went a step further and banned U.S. businesses from trading with Huawei, China's largest tech company, and its subsidiaries. These actions nearly caused ZTE to go bankrupt and significantly affected Huawei. In 2022, President Joe Biden extended the focus to China's chip industry. His administration forbade all U.S. firms from selling advanced chips to China and also prevented Chinese design companies from using U.S.-made design software and manufacturing equipment. Additionally, it blocked global firms using U.S. semiconductor technology from selling advanced chips to China. In essence, the U.S. leveraged these bottlenecks to halt China's chip industry's progress. Subsequently, the U.S. enacted a law to invest billions into its chip manufacturing companies and finalized a deal with Taiwan's largest manufacturer, TSMC, to construct factories in the U.S., ensuring America stayed at the forefront. This, however, escalated another dispute between the U.S. and China. Since 1949, China has regarded Taiwan as a renegade province and has pledged to reunite with it, even hinting at invasion. The U.S. has committed to Taiwan's defense. Interestingly, Taiwan controls a vital part of the chip supply chain, manufacturing 63% of all chips and roughly 92% of all advanced chips. These Taiwanese companies are crucial to both U.S. and Chinese chip industries, providing Taiwan with a defensive shield. However, U.S. export controls left Taiwan's companies with a tough choice to ignore the U.S. and continue selling to China or adhere to the regulations, depriving China of some of its chips. They've indicated a willingness to cut off China so far. As the China-U.S. chip dispute escalates, more countries and companies worldwide will face similar dilemmas, forcing them to choose sides in what resembles a new Cold War. That's it for today. We hope you found our video interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with others. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new uploads. In the end, thanks for watching and see you next time.